speeding motor in a 40 Ford coupe. She had a racing cam and a supercharge. Look out, buddy, hotter, hot and larger. She's a hot rod. She's a hot rod. She's my hot rod. I got to tell you the story, and this is why I brought him here today. Uh, and I'm God, I'm glad I did because I really needed to have the engineer here. But Chuck is a DeLorean guy. I'm, I'm the DeLorean guy, I think, around here. <laughs> we call him Chucky DeLorean or CD or DC, DeLorean Chucky. He uh, he got mad because he couldn't make his DeLorean run right. So he pulled the engine out. And he's going to put a Chevy engine. We in pulled it. the whole thing apart. I mean, I literally said, uh, you know, I'm uh, that's sort of the engineer in me. I just tell the story about how, like, for instance, when I first moved into my house, the faucet was leaking in the bathtub, right? Uh -huh. So I started by, I started, I was gonna, just going to replace the faucet. Two weeks later, renovated the, you know, you, you start tearing the walls down. <laughs> I found plywood behind the walls. I found this was wrong. So so a simple, simple matter of what should have been changing the washer in the faucet became a total bathroom renovation. Should have changed and, the washer, Chuck. <laughs> and the DeLorean is the exact same way. What should have been a simple, you know, a simple process of, of calling George and saying, help me figure out this fuel distributor issue became a little literal, literal tear down to the last bolt and start over again. Uh, as far as the frame goes. But I mean, at the end of the day, I, I told my son, who's eight, I said, I said, I'm going to take this thing apart. I'm going to put it together. And it's nobody, you'll be the next one to take this thing apart in 30 more years. So you, you know? better keep an eye on it. Right, exactly. And you got to restore it again. Right. So I told him, I said, you pay attention because you'll have to do this again someday. So are you figuring you're going to have like a 10 second DeLorean on the street? Yeah, that's, you know, so what, what I ended up doing was, um, as you know, I mean, a lot of people that know DeLoreans know that its biggest Achilles heel was its PRV engine that generated a whopping 108 horsepower. Well, yeah, it was a dog. I mean, again, and, and people that know the DeLorean story, I mean, you know, you don't fault John DeLorean. The guy was a smart guy. He just, you know, ran into a lot of, he, he, he was up against the clock. He was up against bureaucracy, things like that. And, um, you know, he literally had to build a car from scratch in 18 months and things like that. I mean, unheard of. He was up against... Chuck, he was up against the big boys in Detroit and every, everywhere. Right. Said, hey, we're going to stop this guy. Right. They wanted, he was one of their guys. He was a designer. Yeah. He, he said, uh, for, you know, they, they, he, they didn't want to listen to him. He said, we should do this. We should do that. And they said, you know, that's too radical for us. He said, that's fine. I'll start my own company. And, and then they, of course, right. they went after him. Right. They, they wanted to block him. I mean, it's just how the big money boys are. Right. So then, so that was the idea was, I mean, it's always been its Achilles heel. So if you're going to be working on a DeLorean, I mean, you know, I, so what we did is we, we pulled out the PRV and uh, I, I, I sourced a, a, literally a, a, an LS engine with zero hours on it. I don't know if I ever told the story. It literally, it was on a, I think it was on a cargo van or a Silverado or something because that's where the iron block LS engines right. come from. It fell off the delivery truck. So it was a, a loss. You know, that means a salvage. So this guy literally got the zero mile, cr basically a crate engine out of this, you know, maybe he had five miles on it at best. And he got this engine. He was going to put it in like a Corvair or something, changed his mind. So I have this zero mile LS engine, you know, which I mean, <laughs> iron block. So, I mean, imagine if, and, and this is the thing that people don't need to need to understand is I'm not a car guy. So, I mean, so when, when I tell people that story, like you have a, you know, a zero mile LS iron block engine, it's like having a blank slate that you can do anything with. You, can, you start, you're starting fresh. Right. And that's sort of the, the interesting thing about this project is, you know, with the DeLorean, you're, you're there's literally five people in the in the world that sell parts for it. So, you know, you basically either get a 30 yeah. year old part or there's a couple of guys that are making new parts. So it's kind of this interesting dichotomy where you have a DeLorean, you have to take whatever parts are available for the DeLorean, but then you get an LS engine where literally it's a blank slate. Well, there are a, millions of LS there's parts. There's a fellow that bought a lot of leftover parts. Right. He has that. There's a lot of junkyard parts. Right. The, there's a one company in California that's they specialize in DeLorean parts. Right. And uh, there's only like three, like you say, three or four or five that I'm aware of. And uh, you got to pay what, what they charge. Well, right. So Stephen Wynn bought the, the rights. He basically has all of the parts down in Texas. And he's got a couple. He's actually got one here in St. Charles, Illinois, um, out west, out east, and um, you know, Florida, places like that, California. Um, but but it's, it's, it's kind of a, a neat family to be a part of. You know, I mean, it's a neat group. Everybody always says, I mean, it's one of those funny things where you, when you find the right kind of group, you feel like your family. Uh, the De DeLorean guys are, you know. I feel like family with those guys. I, I, I really opened well. my shop in 1982, and a very, very close friend of mine bought a DeLorean mm -hmm. in like uh, 89 or 90. Wow, okay. Painted it red, mm -hmm. loved the car. It was a, his toy. Uh, I called it his Fuchi Manuli because it's just this 
it, it wouldn't go zero to 60. It, let, it took an hour. It took three days, right? Yeah, it goes zero to 60. <laughs> right. But at 60 mile an hour, you could make a 90 degree left hand turn and it would hug the road. Oh, absolutely. I you, mean, you ordered a shock for that car, you ordered the right rear or the left front. You didn't right. order a front or a rear shock. You didn't order a tire. You ordered tires. You ordered a left front or a right rear. It all had to be. It had to be DeLoreanized. Right. <laughs> that was unbelievable. Well, and that's when I when I work with normal car guys, or I go to our, our local shop to get stuff machined or pressed or whatever. They, you know, like they always, I take stuff to them and I have a bunch of notes on it. And, and like one time they press something backwards. He said, "I said this is backwards." He said, "No, it's not." I said, "This is backwards." He said, "No, it's not." I said, "This is for a DeLorean." And he goes, "Oh, it's backwards." It's backwards. <laughs> <laughs> on that note, we'll take a quick break. Here we are, buddy, your first trip to a real parts store. Oh, joy. Oh, come on. It's a cool place to hang out, and Bumper to Bumper is one of the coolest. Bumper to Bumper stores are a throwback to the old parts stores operated by real parts guys, but with the latest technology and the buying power of the big chain stores. What are we going to do here? You know, we can check out all the displays or talk to a real parts expert if we want. Remember, these are the guys you're going to need when your car breaks. Gramps, you do remember I'm a girl, right? Uh, yeah, uh, right. Hey, Tom, why are you walking to work? Where's your car? It's in the shop. They said it won't be ready for two more days. <laughs> you should have taken it over to Unlimited Service Automotive. Unlimited Service? They're the best in the region. But aren't they? Fast and reliable, <laughs> you betcha. I heard you that. You know, no one knows cars better than Big George and the gang at Unlimited Service. If I had their... They're over there in Lansing, Corner Ridge Road in Burnham. I'd love to call. The number is 708-895-9520. And... Hey, Tom, where are you going? To Unlimited Service Auto, of course. We're back from on WIMS 1420 AM and WHFB 1060 AM to talk of the South Shore and the talk of Southeast Michigan or Southwest Michigan or whatever it is. It's a beautiful area, St. Joe, Benton Harbor. It's a beautiful place. Anyway, this is where we're talking from. And we're broadcasting live on Facebook. Uh, you can call us now at 928 Car Guy or Car Guys. Call us and if you have a question on a car, if you've got anything you want to tell the car guy, uh, you just don't tell if you're on Facebook. Don't tell me that my hairdo is bad. I paid a lot of money for this hairdo. I, I spent a lot of money getting this haircut. And I'm telling you, I got to have it that way. Anyway, give us a call anytime you want. Chuck Pullen is here, my engineer, the engineer of the world, and he and I are talking DeLorean simply because he has one. I got to tell you, the first time he showed me that he was going to take that Chevy motor. A really nice motor, I mean, a brand new LS, no miles on, no hours on it, and said, I'm going to put it in that DeLorean. I said, yeah, right. <laughs> well, we'll see about that. But that's the trouble with engineers. Now now it became a challenge. Now you know he's going to find a way to get it right, in there. He's going to make it work. That's just what happens when you're an engineer. That's how you, I guess that's how you operate. <laughs> I have more fun with this. And you know what? It's gonna. It looks like it's gonna happen. I want. I'm not going for a ride in it, Chuck. I'll tell you right now, I won't fit. <laughs> you can, hey, I, I, I don't can know get if, in it. You won't get me out. I don't know if I will fit. So I think I'm gonna have to look at moving those seats back a little bit because it, it is a tight fit for me as well. Yeah. Well, maybe by, maybe by then uh, Luke can drive. Huh? <laughs> Let Luke drive that car. He'll well, be fine. A, yeah, I'll teach him how to drive a stick on a brand new zero mile LS engine oh. with a brand new clutch on it. Yeah. Oh. Oh. Hey, you I, know, and I'll, I'll be honest with you, I don't know how to drive stick either. So it's gonna be a lot of fun. I have more car stories than I can tell you. And one of the car stories that I have is a guy, he went, he bought a brand new Plymouth Horizon. I was working for Chrysler back in the 70s. Okay. And he bought a brand new Plymouth Horizon, and then he got drafted. Okay. Put the car in the garage. Mm -hmm. Told his mom every once in a while, go out there and just start it, blah, blah, blah. Let mm -hmm. it run, you know, mm -hmm. you know, keep it, maybe take it around the block. She decided, her and the daughter decided they're going to take it, go shopping. Now, this car had... Less than 250 miles on it when it, when it got towed into our Chrysler dealer with no clutch left. Oh. Burnt to a crisp. Wow. It was done. And I, what do you say? Well, is that under warranty? Uh, no. <laughs> Actually, it's it's not. I wish it was. I'd like to help you. But yeah. it's just, well, <laughs> it is what it is. Uh, stick shifts are kind of a thing of the past now. Right. And they're talking about bringing them back, but now... Uh, 
Everybody's too lazy to drive well, a stick. I was going to say, it's tough. You can't put on your makeup while talking on your cell phone if you're driving a stick. <laughs> exactly. You know? Exactly. And what do you do when you come up on a slight incline at the stoplight? You got to keep it rocking and you got to... Uh, people just don't understand. Right. It's just... It's it's a lot more work. I don't think... I think the, the stick shift is gone. Uh, maybe not from racing, of course, but from the actual driving of the car, the actual... By and going going to the dealership to buy yourself a new car or buy your wife a grocery getter is not going to be a stick. Shift. Well, and that's what one of the, what the DeLorean guys say is the ultimate challenge for DeLorean drivers is DeLorean. They love being in parades. Imagine driving a stick shift in a parade in a thirty year old DeLorean. <laughs> so that's the biggest challenge you ever face as an owner is driving. Oh a parade. God, yes, driving a stick shift in a parade with, with, the, with the with the doors open. I I love talking cars. You call me up and tell me what the problem is with your car. I'm going to tell you exactly what you need to do with it. I got to tell Chuck, I, over the nine or 10 years I've been doing this, I would say 60% of my audience is women. Excellent. They're more, they're more in tune with the cars today than most of the guys. Right. Because they're the ones that are, they have to get it fixed. Right. You know, the husband jumps in and goes to work and says, hey, get the car fixed. You know, go get the car oil changed. Go do this. Go do that. I see more women in my shop than I ever did before. Oh, that's great. You know, that's after, a great thing to see. After 35 years, 30 years ago, you never saw a woman bring a car in. Yeah. They were always intimidated. They were always, and I always had a, a female service writer mm -hmm. to, to write up the tickets for them and everything because they they felt come more comfortable. Oh, that's just, sure. Yeah. But now they're not they're not uncomfortable at all. They can walk in and say, hey, George, here's the deal, blah, 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 blah. And we go on and on. And and, and it's that way with the car show. Well, and I think the you know things like the internet helped that a lot too is because in the old days, you, you were really stuck you would go if your local guy hopefully he was a uh, you know legitimate guy but if you went to the wrong person they told you you know the wrong thing you had to trust his judgment now thanks to the internet if somebody gives you a bad sends you in the wrong direction you can go on the internet and everybody's no he's completely wrong that's you know oh yeah but then of course just like when you go to your doctor you, somebody comes into your shop and says i think this is wrong and you said no i don't think so well the internet says this is yeah. what's wrong just like when you go to your doctor go, i think this is what's wrong with me because the internet said so you know oh i know and it, it, sometimes that gets it is annoying right to be honest with you because a lot of times on the internet is people that are guessing right they're just you know they think they think they think i gotta tell you i work in a circle of guys and i i work i actually belong to a think tank called the iatn and it's uh from all over the world and we are on the internet, we're together, and one of us runs into a really, really queer problem, a really strange mm -hmm. dude car that's messed up. We'll get on the internet with our think tank, and there's, my God, there's 100 and, 105,000 wow. across the world of high-tech guys. There's some low-tech guys on there, too. But out of that, I would say probably 75% of them are high-tech. And these guys... We get a, it's a thing tank. We get a real thing going. Where it becomes get, like a challenge for everybody it to is, solve it, it right? It become, and it be, everybody's bouncing it back and forth, and we're doing our thing. And, and it comes out. <laughs> I tell you what, I, I've never lost a patient yet, thanks to the Excellent. IATM. Because wow. it's a good think tank. I mean, I've talked to guys in South Africa and, and uh, Canada and Europe. and you know, It's really strange, but I, <laughs> I, it helps. And a think tank, today's cars, you know, let's face it. It's not your father's Oldsmobile anymore. Right. Was that was that a commercial? I remember that. And the deal is you can't open the hood and everything looks dark. Did you ever notice that? Mm -hmm. On the new cars, everything's black under right. the hood. Right. Because they don't want to they don't want you to know that this is the power steering or this is the this is the uh, brake fluid or this is the the only thing they really will tell you is the windshield washer solvent. Well, and that's that's the joke that I always tell is that you know I'm I, I come from a mixed family. I drive American. My wife drives foreign. Oh so, no. so so she's a you know she's been driving the German car. So like for instance, uh, she was having an issue with the battery. I spent an hour under the hood of her BMW trying to find the battery, <laughs> only to find out it's, it's in the trunk. Yeah, it's in the trunk. So now oh, where yeah. the heck is that battery at? And then an hour later, I find out it's well, in the trunk. See, and the, and the Europeans. Uh, they get copied by the Americans every once in a while. There's several Chevys out there in that where the battery's under the back seat. Oh, wow. What a bad place for hey, a that's battery. That's where my DeLorean battery is, isn't the back but seat? Yeah, but it, well, if there's people back there and there's a crash, right. batteries batteries can explode. Right. They put out fumes mm -hmm. that will, that oh, will right. explode. I mean, I, I could tell you some stories out of Courier Hair about batteries exploding. You don't want to be smoking around a battery. When you're working on the car, you don't want to have that cigarette and set it on the edge of the battery. Oh, Not sure. smart. Yeah. It's just... It, Batteries have fumes, and they're dangerous.